Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. To review the quadratic formula, if we have a quadratic equation in standard form, which would be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, then for any quadratic of this form, we can determine the zeros, or we can solve it, by saying x is equal to inverse of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And you might want to talk to your teacher, instructor, professor, whoever it might be, to see if you need to memorize this or if this is going to be given to you. If you need to memorize it, I suggest writing it down as much as possible to help you remember. There's also infinitely many YouTube videos of people performing different varieties of this song uh, or this equation to a song. Okay, so let's apply our quadratic formula. We want to solve the equation, leave the answer in simplified radical form if we need to. Now first thing, it does say that we're going to do this using the quadratic formula, but if it's factorable, factoring will always be easier than any other method. However, this one is not factorable. The target product is negative 6, the target sum is negative 2. That's not going to work. So let's label. We have a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 6. So again, if you don't know the quadratic formula, you need to keep writing it down over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until it finally sticks. So I'm going to write it down right here. And make sure when you write this, the whole numerator, that negative b or inverse of b, is part of the numerator. Okay, so let's plug in. x is equal to, we have negative of negative 2 would be 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared, minus 4, my... my radical is sloping down, times a is 1, times c is negative 6, all over 2 times 1. Okay, now we want to clean up what's under the radical, and what's under the radical has a special name, it's called the radicand. We're going to start with that, and then we're going to see if we can simplify the radical, and then if we can simplify the fraction in its entirety. So under the radical, negative 2 quantity squared is positive 4, then I have a negative and a negative, so that's going to become plus, 4 times 6 is 24, and 2 times 1 is 2, okay? So then we have x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 2. The square root of 28 has a perfect square factor of 4. It would be radical 4 times radical 7, and that would be 2 radical 7. So we would say x equals 2 plus or minus 2 radical 7 over 2. I'm saying a lot of 2's and we can actually simplify each term. There are three terms, the 2 by itself, the 2 radical 7, and the other 2 that's by itself. They're all divisible by 2. So we're going to divide each one by 2. That's going to give us 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 1, which we can ignore that denominator. So we end up with two solutions. We have x equals 1 minus the square root of 7, and our other solution is 1 plus the square root of 7. What this tells us, if we were to graph this quadratic, if, if this said equals y, and then the, these were just the, the x-intercepts, uh, this would tell us that we have two real solutions, meaning that this graph would cross the x-axis two times. It's not going to be in any nice place because we do have an irrational part to it, but it will cross the x-axis twice. Our next example, so in order for the quadratic formula to work, we do need to have the equation equal to 0. Right now I see it equals 10, so the first thing I want to do is subtract 10 from both sides. We don't want to label our a, b, and c until we have this equal to 0. So we have 2x squared plus 5x minus 10 equals 0. And you can do a quick check to see if it's factorable. I'm pretty sure it's not. Target product is negative 20. Target sum is 5. I don't think that's going to work out for us. 4 and 5, no. 2 and 10, no. 1 and 20, no. Okay, so now we're ready. A is 2, B is 5, and C is negative 10. Quadratic formula, x equals inverse of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Now we're going to plug in. Inverse of 5 is negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 10 all over 2 times 2. This would be x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25. Then we have 4 times, well negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 10 is positive 80, so plus 80 over 2 times 2 is 4. Coming up here, I'm just going to do that. 
we get x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 105 over 4. Now, the square root of 105, 5 does not have any perfect square factors besides 1, so we cannot simplify it, and therefore we can't simplify the fraction in general. So this one has two solutions. x equals negative 5 minus the square root of 105 over 4, and x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 105 over 4. Again, even though they're kind of awkward, this, uh, if we were to graph this parabola, it would cross the x-axis twice. In our last example, we have this monster of an equation. We need one side to equal zero, so I'm going to take this, these two terms over here, and I'm going to move them to their side. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I'm going to add 1 to both sides. That's going to give me negative 7x squared plus 2x minus 4 is equal to zero. A quick check to make sure it's not factorable, target product would be negative 20, uh, positive 28, target sum would be 2, I don't think that's going to work. So we have A is equal to negative 7, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to negative 4. Plugging in, we have X is equal to the inverse of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2A. And now let's plug in. Negative of 2 would be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times negative 7 times negative 4, all divided by 2 times negative 7. All right, cleaning up the discriminant, that's what's under the radical. That would be negative 2 plus or minus the square root. 2 squared is 4. Here I have three negatives, this negative, 2, 3, so this is going to end up being a minus. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 7 is, yeek, 16 times 7. That's going to be something big and weird. Let's see, 16 times 7 is not 256. Let's try that again. 112. That makes more sense. 112 divided by negative 14. All right, coming over here. Do that. We get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 108 divided by negative 14. Now, interesting thing here, because the first, uh, the, the 2 is negative and the 14 is negative, we can actually divide everything by negative 1, because what that would do is, uh, that would turn this positive and this positive, and this would just, would, would make the signs flip, so what was positive would become negative, and what was negative would become positive. So we can actually drop the negatives. It's not wrong to not do it, but it's just a little cleaner if we just drop those negatives. So when I, as I'm simplifying the radical, I'm also going to drop the negatives. So I'm going to get 2 plus or minus, right, I'm simplifying the radical. So negative 108 indicates that we have a imaginary roots, meaning this graph is not going to cross the x-axis. So first I'm going to factor out an i, and then 108, uh, that would be... 36 times 3. 36 is a perfect square. It has a root of 6. So I'm going to put the i in front. It's fine whether you want to put it in front or back. Just make sure if you put it in the back that it's not under the radical. That would be incorrect. You want to make sure that it's very clearly not under the radical. Oh, I don't know why I put a 7 there. I did not simplify. Okay, let's put our 14 back there. So now we have 2 plus or minus 6i radical 3 divided by 14. So remember what I did is I just I divided the numerator and denominator both by negative 1, which turned at least the 2 and the 14 positive, and it didn't have any effect on the plus or minus. And now 2, 6, and 14 are all divisible by 2, so that would be 1 plus or minus 3i root 3 divided by 7. So we have two solutions here. They are both imaginary. We have 1 minus 3i root 3 over 7, and we have 1 plus 3i root 3 divided by 7. And that would be our final two solutions, our two imaginary solutions, indicating this graph would not cross the x-axis.